solving linear equations for a specified variable. Now, it seems like we have probably already done this before, and actually you have solved linear equations for a variable, but the difference between this video and other videos is everything except for the variable and the other videos are numbers. In this video, it's basically a whole equation full of letters, and we still have yet to solve for a specified variable. So let's quickly review the steps to solving linear equations, because they are the same whether it's numbers or letters. We simplify each side of the equation first, if possible. Then we rearrange things around the equal sign by doing opposite operations. And last but not least, we solve. So let's just see our first example of this. Notice in this equation, d equals r times t, there is absolutely no numbers involved. It's only letters. So that's the difference between this video and other videos. Before we actually discuss how to solve this specific example, let's see what this pertains to. d equals rt, if you're not familiar with this equation, this means distance equals rate times time. So if you want to figure out how far you've traveled, you take the time it took you to get there times the speed that you're traveling at. But let's just say we want to do the alternative. We want to solve for t. So we want to figure out how much time it took us to get there if we know our distance and our rate, our speed that we're traveling at. Well, the way that we do this is we isolate our t variable. The operation that's happening between r and t is multiplication, so our opposite operation is to divide by the thing that's bothering t. So in this case, I divide by a r. So my r's cancel out on the right, and that leaves me with my time isolated. Now, on the left, I cannot do anything with this here. I cannot simplify it in any sort of way. So all I have to do is copy it down as is. So I have my t isolated, meaning I have solved for my t variable. This means if I want to figure out how much time it took me to get there, I take my total distance and divide it by my rate. Let's see a second example of this. 3x plus 2y is equal to 6. We have yet to see an equation like this. But we will be seeing many equations like this very soon. So you're just going to have to trust me as to what this equation stands for. In this one, we want to solve for y, which we will be doing quite often. So I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can solve this one on your own. OK, so I want to isolate my y variable. So the first thing I need to do is to get rid of this 3x. I add and subtract before I multiply and divide. That gives me 2y is equal to, now I can write this as 6 minus 3x, or I can write it as a negative 3x plus 6. It does not matter. To get my y completely isolated, I divide by 2, and that gives me y is equal to, I can leave it as one big expression like this, or I can actually separate it out. Since I only have one denominator, I can put each of those terms over that denominator separately. The advantage to doing that then is then I can simplify some of this here. 6 divided by 2 gives me 3. And then I can write this as minus 3x over 2. Or I can even manipulate it and write it as negative 3 halves times x. So you can put this in as your final answer, and that's perfectly acceptable. Or if you went farther and you put this in as your answer, that is also perfectly acceptable. So we have completely isolated for y. And that gives us great practice for this when we see it later on. A little bit more complicated example here. A equals 1 half H times a capital B plus a lowercase b. 
And what this equation stands for is the area of a trapezoid. So my capital B can stand for my long base, or my base 2 in this picture, and my lowercase b stands for the length of my short base, or base 1 in this picture. So if I want to figure out my total area, and I know my base length and how high my trapezoid is, then that tells me the total area here. But let's just say in this problem, I actually know my total area and my height and the length of my long side, but I do not know the length of my short side. So in that instance, I want to solve for what B is. There's a couple of different ways I can go about this problem by isolating my B. And let me mention all of them, although I probably won't work through all of them. The first thing that I can do is I can take this 1 half H and I can distribute it through. And that's perfectly fine. Eventually, you'll have to do work to get your B isolated, but that's a great first step. Another thing that I can do with that 1 half H is I could try and eliminate it from the right-hand side and move it over to the left-hand side. And I can either take two steps to do it by first getting rid of the 1 half, by multiplying by the reciprocal, and then second, by getting rid of the H, or I can get rid of it all by one step. So to get rid of my 1 half, I multiply by the reciprocal of 2, because 2 over 2 cancels out. And to get rid of my H, I divide by it. So I would divide by H. Or the condensed version is I can multiply both sides of my equation by 2 over H. So if I do it on the right-hand side, I have to do it on the left-hand side. Again, on the right-hand side, 2 divided by 2 cancels out, and H divided by H cancels out, leaving me with capital B plus lowercase b. On the left, I can make this a multiply fractions, where I multiply straight across. On the top, 2 times A, or 2A, over H. Now, to isolate my little b, it should be really easy. I just subtract over my capital B from both sides. So, my little base is equal to 2 times my area divided by my height, subtracting the length of my long base. And I have my short side or my short base isolated, so I have done what I set out to do in this problem. I have one more example of this type of equation. A equals P plus PRT, and this stands for money. We all like money problems. The amount A is the total amount at the end of your account. If you start with a principal of P such and such dollars, when you invest it at a simple interest of rate R, like a 4% interest rate, for T, a certain amount of time. So hypothetically, I'm investing $100 for 4% interest for five years. That can tell me how much money I'm going to have at the end of it, if it's computed by using simple interest. Let's just say that we want to think about this problem in a different sort of way. Let's just say at the end of a certain amount of years, we know how much money we have, and we know the rate, and we know the time, but we forgot how much principal that we started out with. So in this equation, we want to solve for P, or solve for principal. I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can do this one on your own. The first step is the trickiest on this problem, and once you figure that out, then the rest of it should be pretty easy. And it all goes back to using your best friend in math, which is not your calculator, it's actually factoring. We want to factor a P out on the right-hand side of this equation. So if I do that, I'm left with 1 plus my rate times my time. Now, I've switched both P's down into one variable, which will make it possible to solve for this one variable. 
So if you did it on your own and you got P on both sides of the equation, then you actually did not solve that equation. You need P isolated by itself with no other variables of the same on the other side. Okay, so to completely isolate my variable then, I need to do my opposite operation. This is multiplication, so to get rid of everything else, I divide by it. If I do it on one hand side, I have to do it on the other. That gives me P isolated where my amount is divided by one plus my rate times my time. And so that will tell me how much principal I started out in this account in the first place. And so I've walked you through quite a few examples of how to solve linear equations when we basically only have letters involved.